this is a nighttime shot taken way after sunset. And with this video, I want to show you how we can bring back some of these nice warm sunset colors using a bit of Lightroom editing. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file. You can find a link to it in the description of the video. And now let's begin. The first thing I want to change is I want to adjust the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to lessen the contrast. This is really important for the base image because I want to have a very neutral to begin working with. Also, let me crop the image real quick. I do want to take away a bit from each side and I want to crop out the shadow in the bottom right corner like this. Let's also take away a bit more from the left side, but that's looking good. Okay, right away I want to fix the brightness because this looks super unnatural. I'm simply going to drop the exposure and instantly you can see how we are improving this image, giving it a more natural nighttime look. Of course, we still want to have details even in the darkest areas, but the original file was just way too bright. So let me bring down the exposure like this. And I also want to add contrast by bringing down the shadows very, very gently. As I bring down the shadows, I'm always paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to underexpose anything too badly in this scene. What else we can do to add back contrast is to play around with the whites because right here, looking at this program, you can see the whole image is more in the darker range or maybe even in the mid-tones range. By bringing up the whites, we can stretch the histogram, introducing some more tonality to this image, just like this. Looks much better. Now, at this point, I'm also going to bring up the blacks just so we are safe from clipping anything in the darkest areas of this scene. Let me raise them quite a bit. Right around here looks good to me. Now, as we have adjusted the exposure of the image, what we can do now is to focus on the white balance. And for this scene, I do want to have a rather warm sky, but I don't like how the warmth affects the foreground with those very ugly, muddy looking green tones in here. This might be a problem when we adjust the white balance overall, but let's do it anyway. What I want to do is to bring down the temperature, making this whole shot a lot colder. So somewhere around here where we have a nice blue sky. And at this point in the foreground, you can see some blue tones kicking in. I actually think this looks quite good in the foreground as well. So I'm quite happy with the white balance for now. Of course, we are going to adjust the sky later on with some more targeted adjustments. But first, let's go through the presence tab as well. I want this image to look sharp and clear. So I'm going to add some texture. I'm also going to add some clarity just like this. And that's about it. This really helps to make, uh, to give the image some extra contrast and some extra sharpness. And of course, I want to boost the vibrance a little bit so the colors of the picture look a bit stronger. Wonderful. So that is our image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see at this point, it's looking way more like a nighttime scene with the adjusted exposure, making the whole image a little bit darker and making the shadows a little bit deeper. Making this whole image darker also really helps to make the subject right here in the sky stand out even more. So with the basic adjustments out of the way, what we want to do now is to focus on a few areas locally. And as always, we are going to be using masking for that. So let's open up the masking panel. And I want to start with the sky. So my idea for the sky is to make the top part dark and cold, while the bottom part above the landscape is bright and warm. We can start really, really simple here using only a linear gradient. And I'm going to make it really soft. So a huge gradient like this. Now what I'm going to do to make the sky darker is to not drop the exposure because this would also affect the highlights and with the highlights, the stars would get darker. That's not what we want. We just want to make the darkest areas darker. So what we need to do here is to bring down the blacks. I'm going to drop them quite a lot to make this effect really dramatic, just like this. Now, as we bring down the blacks, you can see the color is changing as well. The blue tones are now way more saturated, which I think looks quite ugly. So when bringing down the blacks like this, I also want to bring down the saturation 
to counter the effect it has on the colors. What we can do as well is to play around with the white balance a little more. We don't want to make the sky colder by dropping the temperature. We want to make it warmer by increasing the temperature and thus reducing the blue tones of the top part of the sky. Just like this. And immediately it looks much, much better. Now I want to stack multiple of these masks on top of each other. So let me use another linear gradient. This time I'm making it just a little bit smaller to get a more natural fade into the darker areas of the sky, just like this. This time I might want to drop the exposure because I'm really only affecting the very top part of the image. So let me bring it down like this. Now, if you're worried about the highlights of the stars, what we can do is to kind of boost the contrast a bit. This will make the darker areas darker and the brighter areas brighter. In a way, this will help make those stars pop a little more. Again, these changes will have an effect on the colors of this area. So I want to counter adjust that by bringing up the temperature once more. I'm only going to raise it very slightly. This should be enough already. We don't want to make the sky too yellow. We want to keep this nice dark blue tone like it is now. Now we have worked on the top and making it darker. Now let's work on the bottom part of the sky, making it brighter and warmer. I'm going to use a simple sky selection first. And since I don't want to affect the whole sky, we need to modify this mask. I'm going to say subtract and let's choose a linear gradient. I will be subtracting quite a lot here since we only want to have the bottom part of the sky affected by this mask. This is looking pretty good. Now what I want to do to make it brighter, first I'm going to raise the whites. Let's raise them quite a bit. And to add warmth, again we are making use of the white balance. So simply raise the temperature slider. I'm raising it a lot in this case, since I want to have a very visible yellow shine in this bright area of the sky. So maybe like this. Okay, this already helps a bit, but again, I want to stack multiple masks on top of each other. So I'm going to create another sky selection. This time I'm clicking on these three dots, go to intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. Now I'm creating a very, very small and thin radial gradient just above the horizon like this. And why am I choosing a radial gradient? Simply because I want to have a round bright spot in the center. I don't want to go it from one edge of the image to the other edge all in one mask because that would look unnatural. So that's why I'm using this radial gradient. In here, I'm once more bringing up the whites to make this area brighter. And I think we could even increase the exposure a bit to make this effect stronger. All right, this is looking great, but we're still lacking some colors in here. So we're going to make use of the temperature slider once more and let's raise the temperature quite a bit more than before. Let's say something somewhere around 60. And now we can already see that nice yellow glow coming from behind the horizon. But we can further improve this effect. Let's click on that little color box right here. And I want to add a very specific color tone to this mask. I'm going to pick a color somewhere in the orange range right around here. And, and I do think I want to tone down the saturation just a bit. Now we even have added some extra orange glow to this spot. This looks perfect. So after working on the sky for a while, I also want to work on the foreground because at this point it starts to stand out a bit too much. I'm going to use another sky mask and we're going to invert this mask because we want to change the foreground. And in here, what I want to do is to bring up the contrast. This will help making the foreground a little bit darker without affecting the highlights in a bad way. And I'm also going to bring down the, temp the temperature because I think the foreground is a little too warm at this point. And let's also drop the saturation quite a bit. Now there's one more mask and for that I'm going to use a color range mask. Let's click somewhere in, in the yellow part of this flower. With this mask, I want to target all the yellow flowers of the image. 
I want to make use of the refine slider, bring it up some more so we get a wider selection of yellow tones. And what I want to do here is to bring up the exposure, making just these flowers a little bit brighter. And I'm also going to bring up the temperature. So the flowers will look warmer than the green tones of the foreground. I think that's a great effect and it's really easy to do with a color range mask for this image. And that's the image after all the masking adjustments. So let me turn off the masks to see the difference from before. You can see it's looking quite boring after the basic adjustments to after with a bit of targeted adjustments to the image to add contrast, warmth and glow to the shot. Much better. Now we also need to focus a little on the color grading. So let's open up the color mixer. I actually want to start with the luminance. In this case, I want to bring up the yellow luminance. I also want to bring up the orange luminance and the green luminance. This will mostly affect the sky and a little bit the foreground as well, making these areas again a bit brighter than before. At the same time, I want to bring down the blue luminance, which will in turn make the sky look darker and give it some more contrast. So let's bring down the blue luminance just like this. Wonderful. Then let's check out the saturation tab. What I want to do in here is to bring up the yellow saturation for the flowers and for the sky. Bringing up the yellow saturation will affect those areas in particular. I'm also going to bring up the blue saturation to make the sky a little more vibrant like this. Looking really good so far. Now I also want to go into the hue tab and what I want to do in here is to target the blue hue and I'm going to bring it down very, very gently. This will add a more cyan tone to the sky, which in my opinion fits really well with the warmer color tones of the horizon of this image. So let's bring it down like this. Perfect. Of course, we can also apply some split toning to this image. Let's start with the highlights. And for the highlights and the midtones, I'd like to apply a warmer color tone to this shot. So let's set up the hue. Uh, I'm going with something in the orange color range here. And then we need to bring up the saturation so we can see this effect kicking in. Now, depending on what you like, you can go really crazy, bring it up all the way like this. However, I think that's a bit too much. I want to keep it more subtle this time. So let's go with something like this. Now I'm also going to head into the midtones. And again, as I said, I want to apply a warm color tone. So let's set up the hue. I do think I want to use a lower amount of saturation in here. But again, this will help improve the colors of the sky quite dramatically. Of course, we want to keep some color contrast and that's why I'm going to use the shadows and add a very cold blue hue to this area. This is looking good. And let's bring up the saturation just a tiny bit because otherwise if you go too high, it will look very, very strange. So I'm just going to use a low amount, somewhere around five, I think should be enough. Now we're almost done with the color grading. I just want to head into the calibration tab. And as always, I'm playing around with blue, primary, hue and saturation. So let's bring down blue, primary, hue first. What this does is it just makes the blue tones and the warmer tones of the image look a bit nicer in my opinion. But of course, that's just a personal thing. If you don't like it, you of course don't have to do it the same as I do. And finally, let's push the saturation like this, making the colors pop even more. Now all that's left to do is a bit of sharpening in the details tab. Let's do that. Bring down the radius all the way, increase the details all the way up. And of course we want to add some masking while holding down the Alt key. So we can nicely sharpen only the important areas here. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. Now, since this was shot at ISO 3200 and we did a lot of editing, there might be a bit too much noise in this image. I think I'm going to reduce it. So I'm going to make use of Lightroom's AI denoise function. Therefore, let's click on denoise. All right, looking good. I'm not changing anything. Let's just hit enhance. All right, this looks awesome. Now there are a few planes flying through the image, which I want to clean up. And therefore I'm going to be using Photoshop. Let's right click on the image, go to edit and choose Photoshop. 
the first thing I'm doing is to create a backup layer. So let's hit Ctrl J to duplicate the first layer. Then I'm using the spot healing brush. Let's zoom in where all the planes are. And I'm going to make this brush really, really small to only affect a small area. And then I'm just brushing over all these trails of these planes. And this way we can nicely clean up this image. And that's it. So I hope this little Lightroom tutorial on how we can restore these sunset colors for a, for a nighttime shot like this was helpful and interesting. Of course, as always, if you have questions or if you want to add anything about this editing process, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.